Good morning. I think you're almost awake. Let's try it again. Good morning. Isn't, gr isn't it great to be in the Lord's house today? Yes, we are glad to be here. And I want to share with you a few announcements. As you noticed, when you came in, you got a bulletin. And on that, inside that bulletin, which might have fallen out on the floor, so check your uh, rows there, is on the day that you were baptized, we're going to have a baby baptized today. And so we want you to write something sweet down here for Opal so that when she gets older, her mom and dad can show her this and she can know that we were here today to welcome her into the church. So be sure you find this. If it fell on the floor, hunt for it and we'll get you another one if you need to at the back. Um, our church has recently been working with the Henderson County Emergency Management Office to be better prepared in the event of a weather emergency so that we can be a site where people can come if it's way hot outside or we've got a blizzard or something like that. So um, the Emergency Management Office, along with the National Weather Service, has asked to come to the church this Friday at 11 o'clock to recognize First United Methodist Church as a weather Weather Ready Nation Ambassador for the Henderson area. The media will be here to report on this honor. We need as many people as possible to make this as big an event as possible to help get the word out and celebrate this honor. So please come at 11 a.m. on Friday for a 15 to 20 minute ceremony. If you can do that at all, come. Be proud of your church for reaching out and having this kind of ministry to our community and hopefully encouraging others to do that too. You also can see inside our bulletins this lovely blue page, which is about our annual church picnic. Finally, we're back to picnic season and we don't have any limitations so we can go there. But we are hoping that all of you will register, let us know, put it on your tear off so that you can come and have a good time. We just want to get a count. So we have plenty of chicken and plenty of potato wedges and drinks and all that good stuff. So if you did not sign up in your Sunday school class, then sign up today, tear that off and be ready to come next week. We're gonna have a great time out at Audubon Park um, the shelter we always go to, Sycamore Shelter, and fun for everybody. We'll have stuff for kids and for little people. Did you say something there? Okay, I thought EJ had something to say too. Um, today, uh, I want to introduce our mission chair, Kathy Motter, and I believe that she is going to be coming up with some others in uh, just a second here to uh, share some things that we want uh, to know about some special things that are coming here to us. So please note the rest of your announcements are in the bulletin that you can read there and just see about what's going on around here. So Kathy, is it time for you to come? You come on up and there is a microphone right there. push button, it was a pull button. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I would like to introduce you to a couple of young women who are um, going to partner here with us and with our church family to provide art activities for students here in the Henderson area. Uh, with us today are uh, Allison Brown and Tabitha Taylor. Allison is the director of the Foundry, I want to get it right, Foundry for the Center of the Arts. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done cliff notes. <laughs> anyway, um, we're excited about this opportunity on Monday afternoons from about 3.30 until 5.30 or 6. And, um, and it's open to the public. So anyway, I'm gonna have Allison and Tabitha tell you a little bit about the program and um, how you might even be involved. So, 
Again, my name is Allison. I'm the executive director of the Foundry Center for the Arts. One of the huge thing about the Foundry is we completely believe in the creative spirit. I actually changed our mission during COVID to turn around and get more into the community. And instead of having kids come to us, we are based out of Newburgh, we started joining different churches throughout the tri-state area. Our mission is to bring out the creator in all of us. So not only is that God as our creator, but the creative spirit when it comes to performance and visual arts. Now this after-school arts program that we have has five different class opportunities. Painting and drawing, comic and cartoon drawing, digital arts, hip hop dance, and acting. So Tabitha is our painting and drawing instructor with that. So she can tell you a little bit more about those classes and how you guys can get involved. Hello everybody, my name is Tabitha. I am so excited to bring the Foundry Center for the Arts here. I actually am from Henderson, Kentucky. I attended high school in Henderson, Kentucky, and us being from Newburgh, I'm really excited to bring a program like this to Henderson. I personally wish I had something like this when I was younger, so I'm really glad to start something like this here in my hometown. Um, like Allison said, I am the painting and drawing teacher, so I am really excited to bring valuable art skills to children within your facility. This is really cool for me. Um, if anyone would like to be involved with us, we gladly accept volunteers, even if it's just being able to help spread the word of God to these students, or maybe if you have a little creative edge of your own, if you would like to help with teaching art skills to younger students, that would be really cool. So yeah, just come up and ask me about it, and I will be happy to tell you about it. So yeah, again, really excited to be here. Thank you guys so much for having us here, and we are really excited for the future. Thank you, ladies. I do want to just lift up one footnote to what they just said. Uh, this, this is a, uh, you have to pay to be a part of it, but if we have a student, especially in the life of our church, who doesn't have the finances, there are scholarships available. So if, uh, if you want information on the way out, there's a brochure down in the gathering area, just pick one of those up, and uh, y'all start this coming Wednesday, or Monday, tomorrow. Yeah, the first day is tomorrow, so love to have kids signing up for that. Thank you. Sometimes silence can be so loud. Sometimes silence is cathartic. It makes you feel a little better. And at other times, silence can, can raise anxieties. Silence is a, is a thing. It's necessary, though. As we settle our hearts and minds and get ready for a worship experience, let's use this silence to let go of all the things that have held us through the week. Let go of all the things that have bogged us down in our day. Let go of all the things that we would consider not positive and get ready to give God our greatest. Are you ready to give God a great praise this morning? Can we give God a hand clap of praise right now as we stand to our feet to go to God in great worship? I missed y'all, I'm glad to be back. It's good to be home.
I searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along.
There's so many things that happen in life that make us feel good. There's so many things that, that we'll lean on and think that it's making things better. But really, if you're not built on that foundation that is the solid rock of God, you're on sinking sand. People will love you for a season. Things will last for a season. But I tell you, friends, the love of God is eternal. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus.
to invite the Luke family to come forward at this time. You can put it over there on the bench. Yeah, put it on the bench. Yeah. Today we have a special event here. How good it is when we get to baptize. We got to baptize one of our little ones. Oh my goodness. How cute. So come on up. We got Shelby and Johnny up here as the godparents, as well as an aunt and uncle. Uh, but uh, what a joy it is to celebrate a moment such as this. And um, if you want to turn in your hymnals to page 39, but it's also going to be up here on the on the screen. But uh, brothers and sisters, what a joy it is to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. This is when we celebrate how we're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation through Jesus Christ, but also brought into the life of the church. And so little Opal is going to be coming in as a baptized member today when it's all said and done. And you're going to participate along the way. You're going to be saying uh, 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 words of commitment, not just uh, to Opal, but also to mom and dad here, uh, Scott and Lydia. So you know, be ready to, to, to make your affirmations uh, in their lives. But, but this is all gifts of God given to us uh, without price. And so I present to you today, Opal Malin Luke. And her parents, as I mentioned already, are Lydia and Scott. And so I'd like to ask you both, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture Opal in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say I will. So you, the church, 
Do you, as Christ's body, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please, please say, we do. we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this family, these persons now before you in your care? If you would, let us pull this up and let's join together. You need to put a blank screen behind there, just real quick. There we go. Let us join together. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this family with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Okay, that's it. There was no period. I was expecting another sentence there. Okay, well with that, friends, let us join together in the professing of the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And we should, there is a phrase missing there, and the forgiveness of sins. So important, huh? So important. And so, let us consecrate the waters. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, he sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Come here, Miss Opal. The reason we only use the first and middle names is because when she's baptized, her, her Christian name becomes Christian. Yeah, her last name is Christian. So Opal, Malin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this little one. And we pray that you would send your spirit upon her, that you would fill her with your spirit that she might grow to know you, and that she might follow in your footsteps and be your disciple. And that day will come when she can make that profession of faith for herself. And so, so Lord, we just ask that you'll bless her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you gonna squirt, squirm on me here? Okay, let's see if you could hold that up for me. To, let me get this last little part here. Okay, now it's our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Is that on the slide? If you could pull that up. Is it not there? 
Yeah, there it is. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus with joy and thanksgiving. We welcome you as a member of the family of God. Very good. Well, let's take a moment and welcome our newest little one. I'm not kidnap her here. Yeah, so. Yeah, this is your new church family. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's not squirming now. I'll bring her back to you all. Yeah. She wants to. She wants to be with the crowd. I can tell. So Lydia Scott, congratulations. What a joy it is. <laughs> okay, very good. Y'all may be seated. If we could, let's take a time and, and just lift our prayers to the Lord. Oh God, it is so good to celebrate life this morning. That's what worship's all about, oh God, to bring you our worship, our thanks, our praise, for you are the Lord of life. Lord, thank you for giving us the gift of a new little one in the life of the family and the life of the church family. We thank you, O oh God, for the, for the new life that you bring us through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray that as we go out throughout the rest of the worship service, that we will just sense the, that, that life being poured into us by your, your spirit. And Lord, we ask that you'd be attending to the deep needs that exist. Oh God, we just, we just recognize today that as we walk into this sanctuary, each one of us bring our whole selves to you including our brokenness. And Lord, we pray that you will come and you will mend and you will nurture, you will comfort, you will strengthen. And Lord, if, if need be, you need to open our eyes to the brokenness that we've been neglecting so that we might truly be transformed by your glory. And Lord, we lift up to you those that are, uh, that are on our hearts today. We lift up our world to you, O oh God, there's so much brokenness and so much anxiety. And we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And we pray that you will enter into every situation that we have upon our hearts, both conscious and unconscious. And Lord, we lift up to you those that are on our church uh, prayer list today and ask that you'd bring your healing, that you'd be with Del Crabtree, Jerry Wilson, Teresa Vincent, Elizabeth Lee, Bart Bowles, Megan Allred, Bud Hill, Jane Ellen Epperson, Allah Simmons. And Lord, we pray that you be with our homebound members and our military personnel and veterans. And Lord, our first responders, watch over each and every one of them. And Lord, as we began this prayer with a celebration of, of new life, we likewise just give you thanks today for, for little baby uh, Cleo the new daughter of Matthew and Haley Hudson, who's flowers on the, on the communion table today. Lord, we just thank you for that little life as well and ask that you be surrounding uh, this new expanded family with your grace and your, your love, your protection, and help to rear that little one in fullness of health. And so, Lord, we lift all these prayers to you as we pray that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, kids, it's time to come on up for the children's message. You're a kiddo. Oh These are my other kids because they come to youth group and I help with that, so they have to be included too. Come on down. Thank you. 
You can come right up there. Yeah. There you go. Just sit down. There's room over here, sweetie. There you go. Well, Mac, we're glad you made it in for the weekend to be with us, too. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you all that are in school, what was the best thing about going back to school this last week? Yeah. Um, all, my new teachers. all your new teachers. Okay, what about you? Meeting new people? High school food's better. High school food's better. Hmm, I haven't heard that before. <laughs> what did you all like the best? Seeing what your classroom looked like. Eva, did you, what did you like best? You haven't gone to school yet, but you will. And you can tell me about that. And Mac, you got to come here to visit, didn't you? Huh? For your first week with your grandmother and your granddad, huh? Well, we're glad that we can remember that Jesus is always with us no matter what may be going on, Jesus is there. And I have a picture of Jesus that I love. I have it in my office, but I brought it out today. Because sometimes when you think about Jesus calling the children because the disciples were trying to keep him back because he was busy, he needed to preach. And Jesus said, bring them on, because he wanted to bless every child. And I picture him as being more like this. This is a picture of Jesus laughing. And I can just imagine that he was so full of life that when funny things happened, he wasn't just saying, isn't that nice? That he would get in there and cheer and have fun with you children because he told the disciples, let them come, for to such belong the kingdom of heaven. And I just want you to know that if you are a follower of Jesus, or even before you make that decision, Jesus loves you, and he wants you to have a great life. Do you see who that is? It's Jesus. Yeah. And of course, they didn't have cameras back then, so they had to do their best of thinking about what would Jesus have looked like. But I love that one because it shows how much he loves us. Can I have a prayer with you? And then we're going to sing our way out. Bow your heads, please, and let us pray. If you'll pray after me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. We are so glad to remember that he always loves us. We pray this in his name. Amen. And we're going to sing a song. I think that EJ's decided a song. That's okay. We can do that one. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And then there's another song that I bet you know, and you all are going to help us on this. It's Jesus Loves Me, because that's what we need to always remember. You know that one. Okay, hit it, maestro. She loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you guys for coming up. You can go back to your seats now. So will the ushers please come forward so that we can receive the morning offering? Come on, you got to share.
Well, good morning, church family. I feel the presence of the Lord in the place. Once again, can we give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. It's been a good time already. And we still have not gotten that great word that Pastor Jim has prepared for us today. But you know, I always say it's a poor frog that won't praise his own That's mom. right. And I have to share this praise report with you today. Now, as you know, we've been doing some things over in the children's ministry. Uh -huh. Now, I know normally I stand up and I speak about our youth family and how things are going great, but today I want to talk just a second about our children's ministry. And we decided that we was going to do a great big back-to-school blowout. We took a whole weekend, Pastor Cindy, mm -hmm. and we did a backpack giveaway over at Saddlebrook Apartments. We gave away 50 backpacks over there, mm -hmm. had a great time, made lots of great connections. You can put your hands together for that. That was good. That was good. Um, as we were leaving, there were still people trying to come out and get that. There's a great need in the community. And the very next day, we decided to have a back-to-school party for our own here at the church. And you know, mm -hmm. we had 25 young people show up to that. Yay! And 25 children to show up to that. And I mean, there was all kinds of food and tie-dye, shirts or whatnot, whatever the children are into. Still and it was a good time that we had. But here's the thing from that. Here's the takeaway. It wasn't that we had 25 to come out. It wasn't that they had all kinds of big fun. It wasn't that that there was a candy buffet there. It wasn't that that they were able to leave with all kinds of gifts and things like that, cupcakes, whatever. No, but the big thing about it was there were seven people, families, moms and dads and kids, that showed up because of the invitation that was given at the backpack giveaway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yep. You know, Pastor has often said um, God gave him a vision of a great big old waterfall with things sprouting up and how people were going to begin to flow in. And if you look to your left or to your right, you're seeing evidence of that. We're blessed to be a blessing. And I'm so glad that we're here in this community doing what it is that God is having us to do. And we're seeing great evidence of it right here in our great congregation. Thank you all so much for being so open. Thank you so much for being so giving. And we're excited and looking forward to what God's going to do in the coming days. Amen. All right. Now you have, wait, 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 wait just a minute. You have, we're going to bless this before you go take it. He's eager. You better have your money ready. Okay, let's pray. God, we thank you for the many, many ways that you've blessed us, that you've blessed this church, that you have blessed us in our lives with family and our lives even living by ourselves. And you've got plans for us. You've got good things that you want us to do as your church. So we pray that as we give today, we will remember your generosity in the way that we give. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn you, face toward you, and give you peace.
can be gracious to you, Lord, turn his face toward you. sermon note page of your worship folder. Uh, Pastor Jim is picking up on the series from Proverbs. He's calling Uncommon Sense. The book of Proverbs offers us wisdom from God, wisdom for a world where common sense seems to have become quite uncommon in many cases, and wisdom that will help us as Christians to navigate life well. So stand if you would for today's Bible reading from Proverbs 3, verses 27 and 28. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I really appreciate you helping to present the Word of God to us this morning. hope it's not inappropriate, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. He has a podcast called Babylon in the Bluegrass, and I highly recommend it to you. i tell you what, we are so blessed, so many talented people. But, you know, common sense these days, you know, it kind of seems to be like a gym membership. It's available, but you don't use it. Huh? Yeah. Unless you engage it, it doesn't help you. Well, the book of Proverbs is a compilation of common sense observations rooted in the wisdom of God. It's right here, right here in this book. But unless we engage it, it doesn't do us one bit of good. But with but as we look at today, we find there are all kinds of benefits. You know, just like if you go to the gym, you're going to get some benefits from it. There's some benefits right here in what was just read a moment ago. So what are these benefits I'm talking about? Well, in today's Proverbs, I can easily find three. First of all, first of all, today's Proverbs, like all Proverbs, uh, is about transforming our character, your character, how we conduct ourselves around others. Left on our own, you know, we can make some pretty questionable decisions, can't we? Values can become twisted, selfish, self-centered. But as people of faith, you see, our values are turned inside out. Inside out. God gives us a different goal and intention other than being focused on self. And what's that? To become godly in our character. Godly in our character. In other words, to become like God in our perspective. 1 Peter 1.16, Peter quotes God where he, when he says, be holy because I am holy. We have a holy God. You see, as we look to God, he transforms our character to be holy just like his character is holy. In other words, we're to be holistic in our perspective and conduct. It's not just about me, which we just sung about, huh? It's about Jesus, right? It's about others. It's about the bigger picture. It's about making this world a better place. It's about acting out of love, which often takes work, time, and even sacrifice. Secondly, today's proverb is about making us into what? Attractive people. Into, into attractive persons. Please hear that. It's about making you into an attractive person. How do I know that? Well, all we have to do is look a few verses up in, uh, in, in Proverbs 3, verses 21 and 22, and we find the pretext for today's text. 
21 and 22. This is the message version. Dear friend, guard clear thinking and common sense with your life. Don't for a minute lose sight of them. I mean, folks, it's saying this is really important. And, other, it, it, and it goes on to say, they'll keep your soul alive and well. They'll keep you fit and attractive. Attractive. So nothing is more unattractive, you see, to people around you than to be totally self-centered. Our attractiveness, you see, goes way up when we have a loving attitude and perspective that starts to grace the way we think and act. Transforming our character, making us attractive. The third thing God's wisdom tries to do for us in today's Proverbs is, in proverb is increase our sensitivity. Increase our sensitivity. Helping us to be more sensitive to the real need that exists around us. Especially with the poor. You know, in a lot of ways, it goes back to the golden rule. What's that? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Well, we find that essentially in today's uh, psalm. It, 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 or rather, in Psalm 4017, we find the prayer of someone who's hurting. It says, as for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. Oh, my God, do not delay. I mean, this is someone praying that's hurting. And, and when we're hurting, we, we don't want, what, delay. We, we, we need help right now. We don't need someone to say, well, I'll get back to you tomorrow when the need is right now. And today's Proverbs is joy, just pointing out the obvious and the practical. When we come across someone who's in need and we have the capacity to meet that need, well, we need to be sensitive to the fact that we, we can do something about it. We need to be sensitive to their need and, and meet that need. Don't delay in extending help. And that brings us to the main point of Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. And what's that? Be ready to help. Be ready to help. Don't delay in doing what's right and good. That's so important for us to hear as Christians. Now, as we look at the whole of Scripture, there's an obvious application in a couple of ways. First of all, for employers. For employers. Notice that the first line says what? Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. Now, nowhere is something due than what? Paying a fair wage right away, or at least on time, when the paycheck's supposed to be there. Huh? You know, as we look at the Bible as a whole, just being just uh, in our compensation to others for their work is part of the biblical ethic right from the very beginning, the Judeo-Christian ethic. Uh, look, just look in the first part of the Bible. Two of the first five books has something to say about this. Leviticus 19 says, do not withhold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. In other words, be prompt in your pay. But then, likewise, in Deuteronomy 24, it drills down on that instruction even further. It says this, listen, do not take advantage of a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether that worker is a fellow citizen or a foreigner residing in one of your towns. Pay them their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, they may cry to the Lord against you, and you will be guilty of sin. I mean, that, that puts it down in pretty stark terms, doesn't it? In other words, God really cares about this, really cares about how employers treat their employees in paying workers fairly and promptly. Make no mistake about it. Our God is a God of justice, and God expects people to treat one another fairly, justly, especially when it comes to the working poor. Does God care? Does God care when 700 workers in England goes on strike to demand a livable wage from a multinational business where the owner is out floating in space for personal pleasure? I think so. Does God care when 83 global 
corporations that include big tech, sports apparel, fashion wear, auto manufacturers, where they have factories in their supply chains that use slave labor in China. Yeah, I think God cares a lot about that. I think God cares a lot and gets really ticked off when we allow that kind of cruel, unjust, hideous behavior to go on. And likewise, we, should we as Christians and Americans who fought through our forebears to end slavery through a civil war and fought exploitation through the civil rights movement, shouldn't we care when that happens? You know, we as Christians especially have a responsibility to see where our products are made. And when possible, not support places and corporations that oppress and exploit the poor, even if it does mean we have to pay more. Now, I know that in certain instances, there's nothing we can do. But oftentimes there is. Oftentimes there is. For example, I know a photographer who recently bought a new tripod and found, it, it found a, a two of them online. One was about, two, uh, about a third less than the other one. And, and he was about to buy the cheaper one until he realized it was cheaper because of stolen technology and the use of slave labor. Willingly bought the more expensive one. Willingly bought the more expensive one. You see, some things like injustice and exploitation aren't worth the savings when people are being, being denied their due wage. People deserve to earn a livable wage, even in countries halfway around the world. Now, the good news is, I don't know if you realize it, but on June 20th of this year, the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act became law here in America that requires companies importing goods from China to provide clear and convincing evidence that no component was produced by slave labor. And those who championed and passed that law are to be commended. But folks, that's just the beginning step to a huge issue. And we have a responsibility as Christians to know where we're buying our stuff from and doing the best we can. It's just common sense, isn't it? That for our world, our own neighborhoods, our communities to flourish, employers need to be willing to pay wages that people can actually live on. We as Christians need to be sensitive to that and practice it ourselves. But that also brings it a little closer to home. For us as Christian, as Christians, it also means that it comes down to the basics, does it not? That we are to love like Jesus. That we are to love like Jesus, whether it be through employment or just demonstrating generosity. You know, being a Christian means that our goal is to live like Jesus. You remember what we said a little bit earlier? To be holy just as God is holy. We're to be loving just as Jesus is loving. And what does that mean? It means being generous, generous and doing good. You know, when John the Baptist's disciples went to check out Jesus and they were wondering whether he was the disciple, he, he said, well, go back to John and tell him what you're seeing. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. In other words, Jesus was constantly just meeting needs, sensitive to the hurts that people had and bringing healing and provision into their lives. And how does Jesus seek for that to be done now? Well, guess what? Through you and me. Through the abilities of those who bear his name, the name of Christ, us as Christians. I love John Wesley's commentary on this passage when it says good. Wesley defines good as anything which is good, either counsel, comfort, reproof, in other words, correction, or good things of the present life. And where it says, don't withhold, this is what Wesley says, do not deny it, but readily and cheerfully. <laughs> I mean, what a, you know how joyful it is when you actually help someone get their needs met? Do it cheerfully, he says, in imparting it. And likewise, when it says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, who is it that's due? Well, Wesley says, basically, it's to everyone by that great and sovereign law of love. Everybody is due love. 
Everyone is due, being sensitive to having their, their, their genuine needs met as quickly as possible. It's all about being like Jesus. Eugene Peterson in today's passage, I love the way he words it. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Don't tell your neighbor, maybe some other time or try me tomorrow when the money's right there in your pocket. You know, at that point, it's a matter of stewardship, isn't it? It's a matter of stewardship. In other words, how we manage our lives, how we manage our money. Do, do we actually manage our money in such a way that we plan to be generous when there's needs about us? That's part of, that's part of the deal of the Christian life. You know, I know a woman who plans her generosity in this way. She, most of the time, drives around town with a sack of groceries in her trunk just to give to someone who's in need when she happens to stumble across them. I mean, isn't that beautiful? She plans it out so that she's ready to say, here, you're hungry, here's some food. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says that those who sow generously reap generously, and God loves a cheerful giver. And we, and we use that all the time in, in stewardship messages, but, but here the context, you know, once again, context is everything. It ends in verse 9 by saying, as they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. When we sow generously to meet the needs of those around us, it has eternal value. One of the great hallmarks of the Christian faith from the very beginning but has, this, has been living into this principle of doing good and being generous to those in need, not withholding, extending mercy when it's needed. In fact, just this past week, uh, I heard Nicky Gumbel on his, his little podcast on the Daily Bible, or uh, the Bible in one year, it talk about Lawrence. Lawrence was a, was a deacon, a deacon over the finances of the, the, the church. A great revival was taking place all around him. And it was said all of Rome was becoming Christian. A huge revival in Rome. And as a result, Emperor Valerian didn't like it. And as a result, he began to persecute Christians. This was around the year uh, 250. And yet Christians who owned property distributed their money, the church's money and treasures to the city's poor. In a vicious move, Valerian ordered all bishops, priests, and deacons to be arrested and executed. Great persecution. He offered Lawrence, however, a way out if he would just show where all the church's treasures were locked up. Lawrence asked for three days. Three days to gather it all into one central place. And so three days later, Valerian arrived. And Lawrence walked over to the door and he flung it open. And he said, these are the treasures of the church. And inside were the blind, the poor, the disabled, the sick, the elderly, the widows, and the orphans. Valerian was so incensed, he ordered Lawrence to be roasted alive on a gridiron. And he's such a courageous man. This was around 258. But you know what Lawrence did? Is he was dying there on the griddle. He said, turn me over. I think I'm well done on this side. His courage made such an impression that the revival in Rome just increased. And many became Christian, including several senators who witnessed his execution. But here's the deal. He made a tremendous statement about what the church is about, what Christianity is about, and it's about helping when people are in need. Don't delay. When you see a need and you have the means to help let us pray oh lord our god we just thank you for the generosity of a people lord i've seen that generosity 
lived out in so many ways in the life of this church, whether it's through Christian community outreach or our Habitat for Humanity or, or just simply uh, taking care of needs as they, they present themselves. And Lord, we pray that our witness might continue to grow strong and bright as we live into this individually. Lord, we, we pray that you will increasingly make us an attractive people as we live out of the attitude of love. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Well, let us uh, stand. What a great day we've had together. Baptisms, new programs starting in the life of the church. I mean, there's just so much to, to celebrate here. And, uh, and don't forget, it's time for our small groups, our Sunday school classes, our discovery groups. Uh, uh, you know, if you don't, aren't a member of one, check one out today. It's, uh, if you don't know where to go, just ask Pastor Cindy or, or uh, Miss Rhonda here. She knows where things are located. And, uh, and you can get connected. But as you go, may you go in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, both now and evermore. Amen. This is amazing grace.